Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to display the contents of your shopping cart. Uh, I think it's, I'm likely going to break this into two videos. Uh, just, I'm trying to keep things manageable. So we've talked about adding things, clearing your cart, initializing your cart. Here's my buy page. So when I started this project, my first video was just going through the underlying uh, SQL and uh, HTML and PHP. There was a whole video about setup. I don't want to do a whole video about setup. Um, so what I'm just going to tell you is I got this page here uh, with a bunch of 100 lines of code or so just uh, determining what this page looks like. I'm copying that, or I copied it, and I just pasted it straight over to view demo. Right, So that stuff should look familiar. What I did, so I just, I just straight pasted that page, and I got rid of all the session stuff uh, because I don't want to write this page from scratch, and I don't want to make a whole video about how this page is structured. A minute I can live with, but basically this is all just populating the table. If it's not populated, no harm in that. This is all exactly the same. The part that I'm going to be changing is this part here. So this right here was iterating through uh, like a query to a table and it was spitting out all the rows and the rows generated these little forms for each product. I'm just going to get rid of all of that. And this is going to be where we're going to display our our table, which is going to represent the items that uh, people are buying. So it's going to go down here. And so what all I'm trying to point out here is see, I've got a table, right? And so these results are tabular. Uh, so if you're just displaying like the results of a query or something, a table is perfectly appropriate for those. Here's a table. Here's my row. Here's some headings. So for each item, I'm going to say the item name, the price, and the quantity. The only difference is going to be that I am going to have a fourth column and it's going to be subtotal, right? So the idea that if you're buying six of something, it's six times the price, right? So that's the only difference. And now the only thing I need to do up at the top, because most of it's going to happen down here on the bottom of the page, is, you know, that cart we made that's built using sessions. Well, if you want to use session data, then you better call session start. So all that other session stuff, adding things, clearing things, initializing, cart, initializing your cart, well, I guess I don't really have those yet. Although, let me just, let's just cut to the chase here. You know uh, how I had like initialize my cart and uh, clear my cart? I'm telling you, that stuff doesn't change. I'm just gonna feel a little better about things. I'm just, I just took that straight over here. So this is initialize the cart. And this is the tool for clearing the cart. There's really no reason for me to do that right now, but I feel like I'm gonna forget to do it if I don't grab it now. What I did need was this. This is the old initialize the cart script. Because we're gonna be writing code which is built on the presence of a cart. So if that cart doesn't exist, we're gonna get warnings all over the place. So initialize that cart. This right here I could have skipped. But at the point where I've got this, and that, then that means I can assume there's a cart and let's go iterate over that cart. And that's gonna be down here. So notice that the table is just HTML. We're gonna be using PHP to generate some HTML. I have plenty of videos where I talk about using PHP to generate tables, generate tabular data. Um, this is gonna sting if you're not familiar with that. So I've got, I've got choices in how I'm gonna do this. Uh, I'm gonna go the way I'm gonna go, which is a giant echo. So anyways, iterating over that session. Well, if you're gonna iterate over an array, I recommend you use what's called a for each. Right, a for each is a repetition structure. Uh, and so it's kind of built for iterating over an array. So we've got an array, our array is called session cart. So uh, the first thing you pass, pass for each is the name of the thing that you wanna iterate over. It is a session variable called cart, all right? So it's not rows, right? It's like key value pairs is really what it's doing. But I always think of them as rows because they kind of sort of are going to be a lot like rows. And then the rest of the syntax is as key uh, val, like that. If you're wondering what in the heck's that all about, well, I'll show a video on for each loops. Go look into for each loops. There's two kind of ways you can write them. This is one of the ways you can write them. So for each, uh, you know, it's, it's an array, right? So it's going to have keys and it's going to have values. The keys are going to be the uh, item numbers and the vowels are going to be the quantities. That's just how this is going to work. Um, it does make me want to call that quan because it is going to be the quan, but eh, call me stubborn. 
All right, so this is going to iterate through that session of items. Now I'm telling you, every item in the cart is going to be a row. So in other words, for every trip through this array, I'm going to echo out a row. Now see that big old like multi-line echo? I kind of hate doing that, but it's kind of, you know, one evil or the other here. I mean, there's no pretty way to do this. So I'm just going to break it across multiple lines. So opening TR tag, closing TR tag, right? So each, so for each, you can see the scope here, right? Everything in here is happening for each item in the cart. We're going to generate a row. And you know how I have four headings? Well, that means I'm going to have four sets of TDs. So I'm going to do a TD here, close a TD there. This is a great time to do uh, duplication if you have that tool. Let's just copy paste. All right, so one's going to be the item, one's going to be the price, one's going to be the quantity, and one's going to be the subtotal. And so the work that we do in there is what we're going to be working on now. So here's the uh, problem with the way we've implemented this cart. So all we're doing is storing the keys and the quantities, right? So the unique ID and the quantity. Now the problem is when we are displaying the row, like it's not okay to just say, oh, you have three number ones. Because the, the person buying the stuff's gonna say, well, how do I know number one is even the item I want? So my point is we're gonna have to fetch the price and the item description. And there's also gonna be, well, whether we do an image or not, I guess doesn't really matter. I was gonna do an image, but I'm not gonna do an image. I figure, I just re now decided that's a good way to shave down the time on this a little bit, because it's more of the same. All right, so where the heck are we supposed to get the item from? We don't have an item. I can promise you that we don't have an item, uh, like the, the description in the cart, because you know we built the cart, we didn't put it in there. So what we have to do in this scenario, so remember this thing is backed by a table. So we're gonna have to query the table. And so for every trip through this array, we're gonna have to query that table. I mean, that's how you get the details of the item. So that's gonna be select star from, I think it's called products with a K. Um, one of the upsides to having a create table script is you can just look at it here. All right, select star from products where, I think it's PID, I think it's written PID like that. Um, I'm, I'm looking. Uh, yep, it's PID, where PID equals uh, key. All right, so if that seems weird, well, it's not that weird. I mean, it's sure it might look weird, but remember the key is the ID and the val is the quantity. So that if, if the key is one, then this is going to give you all the stuff about thing one. So I'm using my SQLI. You could use PDO. It doesn't matter. I'm just, uh, I, I can write my SQLI with, without thinking uh, as much. So that's why I choose it for demonstrations. Uh, so I'm going to pass that to DBC and pass that to SQL. If you don't know what I'm doing, well, I, uh, I can't help you in the scope of this video. I do have all kinds of videos on PHP. So here's what I always do, or die, bad SQL. I just, I don't expect to have bad SQL, but that's how you debug it. So this means uh, select star for, so give me all the information about the thing where the ID is the key. That's carried out. And uh, another thing I like to do here just to make my life easier is I'll say row equals my SQLI fetch a sock of a result. All right, so this variable called row right here is the thing that I can index into to get the price and the uh, name of the item. So here in this first set of TDs, and I'm gonna build, just do this one thing at a time. Uh, if I want to do the name of the product, I'm just trying, it's called name, right? So that's my, uh, that's my index. Uh, so you're not allowed to echo out an index into an array unless you either can use concatenation or curly braces. I'm gonna do curly braces. Well, I guess I can show you what it looks like if you wanna do it wrong. I, I, don't, I don't exactly know how this will go, but I know it'll be bad. It's kind of fun to see what bad means. So let's see, how, I don't know what, I know this won't be a positive thing. Uh, I don't even know, that's kind of not what I expected. Well, actually maybe it is. 
I just don't know what error that generates. All right, so I wrapped that in curly braces. I'm, I'm a little skeptical that's just gonna fix everything. Well, it did. Undefined variable out. Do you remember when I said I copied and pasted everything? Well, that's that thing. Remember that was our error message from like an invalid quantity? I told you I copied everything. I just ripped out the top, so that was now undefined. But the thing I do, I'll save, reload, talk about what we're seeing here. I'm telling you, we're well on our way to being done with this. Do you see how that actually worked? These things are just blank because, well, why wouldn't they be blank? We didn't tell them not to be blank. So the next thing up is uh, price. I know this video is kind of going slow, but this is kind of complicated what we're doing, especially if you're new to it. The good news is it's just kind of, it's just more of the same. And we're, we're looking for price. I like to go look at my actual table so I can see like the case sensitivity of things. So price, I'm gonna save, I'm gonna go reload. I like to see this thing getting built. Next up is gonna be quantity. Now quantity is a little bit interesting. It's different because it doesn't come from the database, right? The database doesn't store the quantity, the session does. And so remember the key was ID, the val is the quantity. Well, you can just spit the val right there. You don't have to wrap that in curly braces because you are not indexing into an array. Just another benefit of a for each loop. And then subtotal, all right, subtotal, that is a little bit of, uh, that's gonna take a little bit of work. So every item has a subtotal. The subtotal is the product of the quantity and the price. Now rather than, so that, that's gonna go right there. Now I don't really wanna do the math right there, so I won't. Uh, instead what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna declare a little variable right here and I'm gonna call it sub. And I'm gonna say sub is val, remember and that corresponds to our quantity. And I'm gonna multiply that by um, row price. Right, so the price, oops. The price comes from the table the quantity comes from the session, and that comes from this session, which is part of a for each loop. And then our sub will go right here. Now, you're not gonna like the formatting of the subtotal. Oh, uh, I don't know what it did, 73. That's sure that's gonna be easy to fix. That's the old missing semicolon special, which uh, we've all done a few times. And so you might not like the way that that's formatted, all right, look, so if you want to format that as a pretty currency looking string, I have no doubt that there's functions built into PHP to do that, but how about this? I'm just gonna put a dollar sign in front of it. Like it's really super, I think that's like the weirdest thing ever because I just wrote like a dollar sign in a space and a dollar sign. So when a dollar sign's in front of a string, it's indicating a variable, but that's a literal dollar sign, which at this point, I'm kind of just spinning my wheels. Whether there's a dollar sign there or not doesn't really matter. All right, I said I was gonna do this in two videos, but I'm looking at my timer and I'm feeling happy about it. And I'm also feeling like we've got some really good momentum right now, so let's just keep going with this. So those are subtotals. You're also gonna need to do a grand total. Uh, all right, so I'm already having reservations about that decision, but that's okay. So there's a subtotal for every row. So we declare that within the scope of this for each. But a grand total only happens once. So let's make sure that we declare that outside the scope of our for each loop. And so our grand total is just gonna be whatever our grand total was plus uh, whatever the subtotal is. So it's important that we declare this out here because it's not like this sub, You it basically gets uh, reassigned for every row through. Grand total just gets added to every time through. And that's gonna give us our grand total. Now, where does that grand total go? Well, that grand total goes outside of this for each loop because you're only gonna have one of them and it's gonna essentially be the last row in our table. So echo, um, oh, I'm out of PHP. I was wondering why does that look like that looks? Well, that's why. So echo our last row. Now, I'm not gonna split this over too many rows. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So it's a, it's a TR. Now I'm just gonna do a singular TD. Now, if you don't know much about tables, I don't blame you. So you know how all our other uh, rows in our table have four TDs in them? Well, this one only has one. And when you want that to happen, you go call span equals however many columns you want it to span. 
because it's just going to be one at the bottom. And in there, uh, I'll say, I'll give a little label to it, like grand total. And I'll say that's my grand. And that corresponds to that. And I save. I think that is about as far as I can go at this point. Now there's two other things that I think uh, need to be dealt with, and I'm and I'm sitting here right now, kind of struggling with when that should happen. So one is, what if the cart's empty, right? I should say you've got an empty cart. Um. So I don't know what the even title of that future video would be where I did that. So I'm inclined to do that right now, even though I've said I probably won't, but I think I'm going to. All right. So in the event that this thing, uh, that there's nothing in this cart, well, this for each loop is not going to run if that's the case. So uh, down here, I will do this. I'm going to say if empty, because I know that the cart exists. So if uh, dollar sign underscore session cart. So it's not an is set situation because I know it's set. If, but if it's empty, then I just want to spit out a single row looking a lot like that. And instead of like a grand total, it's going to say your card is empty. And this thing I wrote before is actually an else, right? Because it's one of two situations. Either your cart is empty and I need to go encourage you to go do some shopping on my site, or it's not empty and you have a subtotal, right? So that actually ends up being an if else. I just like, right, I wish this was kind of a separate video, but I kind of needed to do subtotals. And if I'm doing subtotals, why not do grand totals? And if I'm talking about grand totals, why not do the your card is empty scenario? And uh, let's see where we're sitting now. I think we're gonna be all good, right? There's our grand total. I don't know if I have clear cart built. I don't remember if I deleted that or not. All right, it works, All right? Your cart's empty, right? It's either empty or it's got stuff in it. And so at this point, you now now you now know how to display your cart. This was uh, 17 minutes in. Uh, we spent a few minutes talking about the general structure of my site. So I don't know. I think the actual displaying the cart content was probably wasn't much more than 10 minutes. But uh, if you know how to add things and you know how to display your cart. Uh, the only thing left to do is update those quantities. So in our next video, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, spoiler alert, it's pretty similar to, uh, to adding things. Thanks for watching.